what happens when a when a man is born again? And I'm going to read out of Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25, NLT version. You know, Jesus told Nicodemus that he had to be born again. We tell people they need to be born again. I want to show you in scripture what happens when someone is truly born again. Ezekiel chapter 36, I'll start off in verse 25. Then I, God is talking here. I, God, will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. So number one, a person that's born again will be clean because God is sprinkling clean water on you. He says, your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. So when a man is born again, he will no longer serve any other God. So all these addictions, all these perversions, all these things that he worshiped in the past, he will no longer worship. Now he's going to worship the living God. Verse 26, I, God will give you a new heart, and I will put my spirit in you. So a man that's born again will receive the Holy Spirit and will have a new heart. If you have a new heart, that means you have new desires. He goes, I will take out your stony, stubborn heart, and I will give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. So a man that is born again, God will put his spirit upon him. And God will make that person that's born again follow his commands. And that person will be careful to obey God's commands because he loved Jesus. Verse 29. I, as in God, will cleanse you of your filthy behavior. So a man that's born again will be cleansed of their filthy behavior. And I will give you good crops of grain, and I will send no more famines on the land. So remember, he will provide. Remember, we talked about he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Verse 31. Then you, the person that has been born again, will remember your past sins and despise yourselves for all the detestable things you did. A person that's born again will hate their past. They're not going to talk about their testimony and talk about all the filthy things and, and act like it's a badge of honor. No, they're going to hate the things they did in the past. Just like Paul. Do you know Paul called himself the least of all the apostles because he persecuted the church? That's a man that's been born again. He's not, he's not boasting about what he did. Guess how many Christians I killed? He hates what he did. He hates it. He hates his past. And Jesus said that everyone must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. So if there's no transformation in our lives, there probably is no encounter with Jesus Christ. Period. No matter what you no matter if you got baptized two times, no matter if you said the sinner's prayer five times, if the Holy Spirit's not inside of you and there's no change in your life, you probably haven't been born again. Because Jesus, I mean, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Is in that second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 is yes who are born again person we see exactly the answer therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation second part is all things have passed away behold all things have become new Exactly the answer in here in the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let me read again verse 18. Now all things are of God, you see. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. It is for himself only, not for others. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. In mm -hmm. verse 20, now and then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were 
through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God in him. It is for him only. Yes. For his glory. Amen. Amen. I I want to make a comment um, about the Ezekiel 36 passage. I think I probably use this one in a lot of the studies, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's great. How can you not, you know, but, um, and, and I'm not smart enough to figure this out on my own. MacArthur pointed this out one time and I, and I heard it in one of the sermons he was doing. If you go all the way back to <clears throat> verse 23 of Ezekiel 36, um, he says, I will vindicate the holiness of my great name. And then in verse 24, he says, for I will take you from the nations. In verse 25, he says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you. So you have a whole bunch of um, statements that, that, that God makes through the prophet Ezekiel. And he keeps saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And we have to understand that, that salvation is wholly a work of God. It's completely a work of God. By the time that I realize it's happened to me, and and I'm repenting, it's already happened. So it's 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 wholly a work of God. And you, when you look throughout Scripture, nowhere do you do you find that it's like, okay, well, God does does all these things, and then I've just got to do this. God does it. By the time I w I'm aware of it, it's already happened. So it's not me. You know, well, thank goodness I repented because then then salvation came. It re really doesn't work like that. And this might bore people. It really might. But re one time we really ought to do a study on the mechanics of, of, you know, biblically, of course, not my opinion, but biblically, what is the order of salvation? How does it happen? You know, here, here you have a sinner, you know, um, that sinner repents. Well, what, hap what happened in between the time that somebody was living in their sin and the time that they repented. Just an interesting topic. Um, and it just the other point that I wanted to make is um, these things that God is saying through the prophet Ezekiel, sprinkling clean water, um, cleansing you from your filthiness, giving you a new heart, putting a new spirit within you. These are spiritual things. These aren't literal. It's not a literal sprinkling, you know, of, of water. I know that can be done symbolically. Um, but these are all spiritual things that, that the prophet Ezekiel is talking about and, and New Testament salvation. So, mm -hmm. Great passage. Mm -hmm.